Now let's get some analysis from Sean Michael Cox, who's a professor of political science at Bakhtar Shahir University and also senior advisor at the Global Policy Institute in Washington, D.C. Welcome once again. And now we've just seen those uh, scenes there of people protesting. Your reaction to what's happening right now and uh, the counting process? This process is, uh, the counting process itself is quite normal. In fact, the states that are in question right now are moving to count faster than they normally would. The problem is that because this race is too close to call, because it's a nail biter, as we say, people want the votes out as soon as possible. But in a normal presidential election year, most of those votes would not be validated until the end of this week or early next week. It's just that everyone's waiting to hear now. And to see the, these crowds protesting outside of, of vote counting centers is very interesting because the initial reports that I saw were actually armed citizens trying to guarantee or protect the vote in the sense that there, there would be no fraud, but I don't know what they would get from standing outside looking inside of the people protesting. And these newer protesters are counter-protesters trying to ensure that they won't be intimidated by those who are wanting to possibly stop the process. That's a very worrying uh, scene to see armed uh, protesters. Now, what do you make of Trump's lawsuits this isn't a surprise. No, this is not a surprise. Just based on what we know of Donald Trump in general, he's a big fan of lawsuits. From his years as a real estate developer and a businessman, he, he filed dozens if not hundreds of suits for reasons mostly to muddle up the issues, whatever it may have been, if it was um, housing issues or was development issues, if it was uh, tax or whatever issues. He's very, very fond of basically throwing whatever he can at the wall to gum up the process, see what sticks. The only real difference is that in the business world, lawsuits can be settled so they don't drag on and don't interfere with business. They cannot be settled in, in the political environment like the United States elections. There has to be a process that has to go through first and then there, it can go to the courts if needed. Sean, let's talk about something that Trump is, is not fond of, multilateralism. Um, today, well, November the 4th, the U.S. officially left the Trump, uh, the, the Paris Accord, and Joe Biden said that he would immediately return to this international climate change pact. Uh, your reaction to this? It's not surprising. One of the fundamental shifts that Donald Trump has carried out uh, as, in his time in office is he's turned U.S. foreign policy and U.S. foreign relations into bilateral transactional relationship. He wants something for something. And these multilateral efforts don't provide that immediate need, that immediate benefit that we see, which in fact goes against at least 50 or 60 years of U.S. foreign policy after World War II, the way that we engage with the rest of the world in a multilateral sense, helped raise our prominence in the world. By just focusing on a bilateral relationship where we will only give something if we get something, that actually reduces the United States' influence with the rest of the world. We'll leave it there for now, Sean Michael Cox. Thank you very much once again. Pleasure.